Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Midweek service, get our batteries recharged, our spiritual batteries, that, that is. Um, thank God for, for services that, that we can come to and be a part of and get a blessing. We don't have to wait till Sunday to be in the house of the Lord. Because, you know, really, the enemy is not going to wait or just decide, oh, I've been working on him or her too much. Let me take it just a little bit easy. Every day that dude got problems. Man. And so we fight back with the word of God and spirituality and being in the right place at the right time. So God is, God is always good to us. My Bible reading tonight comes from the book of Luke. The book of Luke chapter 23. And I'm going to start reading at verse 32. The book of Luke chapter 23, and I'm going to start reading at verse 32. And there were also two other malefactors led with him to be put to death. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him and the malefactors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he be Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar, and saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. And the superscription also was written over him in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. And one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing that seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man hath not but this man hath done nothing amiss. And then I would like to redirect your attention. This is going to be my text for tonight. Verse 34. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. And with the help of the Lord tonight, in the direction of the Holy Spirit, I, I would like to just take my time and preach on the thought or title of a message I am forgiven. I am forgiven. Reverend Palmer, can you please pray, sir? Father, this evening we thank you for everything you have accomplished on Calvary's cross tonight, O oh God. Continue, O oh God, to pour out a blessing amongst your people, pour out a touch, a healing. Whatever it is that we have need of, O oh God, you know exactly what we have need of tonight. Continue to help us even now, O oh God. Help pastors to minister unto us the words of eternal life, and we'll give you all the glory and the Amen. I am forgiven. Forgiveness is one of the great fundamentals of Christianity. Not only does it cultivate harmony in the body of Christ, but it keeps the peace around us as well. Forgiveness may not be the easiest thing to do, however, it is still a choice and a call to freedom. Because forgiveness involves grace, love, and empathy, it literally saves lives. And I want to look at forgiveness here from three different perspectives, using the first perspective, of course, to kind of base it, uh, the message on tonight, and that is God's forgiveness, that's one, and then we're going to look at forgiveness of others, and then forgiving yourself. In our Bible setting, you have this familiar account of how Christ was on the cross. And of course, many of us are familiar with this story. But I think it's very, it's very needful to discuss these things because it's easy to forget about what God has done for us. It's easy to go through the motions and it's easy to just take things for granted, realizing that we are eternally bound, men and women, tonight. 
So we look at the life of Christ and his forgiveness and how that he is the perfect example. You see, every wicked imaginable sin can or shall be forgiven. Now I know many times that don't sound right because of the flesh. The flesh many times like to get the best of us. But see, if we use Christ or God as our example, we'll know what it's like to not only be forgiven, but to, be, uh, to forgive others as well. But I want to look at God's forgiveness and how that he took on the sin of the entire world. Because of the sin of, of, of so many, and we can all be included because we were all born in, in, in that way, but because of the sin of, of, of humanity, Christ decided to go to the cross. He decided to go because he realized that he needed to be that sacrifice, that perfect sacrifice for every one of us. Because if it wasn't for him being on the cross, we would be lost. So we have the sin of the world. I'm not going to name every single particular sin, but I am going to look at the sins of those that crucified him. First of all, these people were liars. They said that he perverted the nation and that he was forbidding to give tribute to Caesar. This was a flat-out lie. They crucified him. They crucified him. They basically um, were, were preparing to murder an innocent man. They mocked him, and they beat him. The prophet Isaiah said in Isaiah chapter 53, he says in verse 2, that he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Christ wasn't just, just kind of touched just a little bit. No, he was beaten. He was mocked. He was ridiculed. All these terrible things that, that happened to him, they, they gambled for his clothes. They crowned him with thorns. They spat upon him. They did anything that they could possibly do to, to humiliate him. And this right here, so we may not have done some of those things in our own lives, but nonetheless, it's sin that hung him up on that cross. It's sin, it's to, it's to miss the mark, or it's to do those things that are outside of the word of God. Not according to a man's opinion, but according to the word of God. And naturally, we know many things are wrong. There's things that we should not do. We, we know that naturally. But sometimes when we're, I would say, not just sometimes, when we are outside of his will, we will give into the flesh. We may not bring ourselves to do certain things, but nonetheless, it's still sin. And it was sin that hung Christ upon that cross. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He said, forgive them. To be forgiven is to be redeemed. It speaks of redemption. The Apostle Paul said in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7, he says, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Redemption is to be delivered or liberated, procured by the payment of a ransom. Forgiveness talks about freedom, the same along with deliverance or redemption, pardon, to let go, to give up a debt. You see, sin cannot be undone, but it can be forgiven. Aren't you glad tonight? Now, some, now, I might, now let me just hold on a little bit, because I'm almost going to jump into another point here. Uh, still talking about God's forgiveness. You see, His forgiveness is the perfect example to follow. None of us can say, well, I don't know uh, if I can forgive. Can you imagine if Christ had that attitude or that mentality? Uh, uh, Father, I don't know if, if I can forgive them. I, I, I don't even think you should forgive them. God's forgiveness is literally out of this world. It doesn't matter what some of us have done and when we can say whatever we want, oh, I'm, I'm too bad, I'm, I'm this, I'm that. It doesn't matter how gross the sin is. God still has the forgiving power to forgive someone. He has the power to release someone. He has the power to deliver someone. Though, listen to what Isaiah 
God said, he says, come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. He says, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. It was not just for uh, any uh, just simple reason, so to speak, uh, uh, why he died. He died for this reason and for this reason only, to set men and women free from the bondage and the captivity of sin. He set us free. God still has all power to do so. The psalmist declared in Psalm 103, For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Oh, that is beautiful right there. You see, some people will read the Bible and they don't understand it. And sometimes they would even find fault and say that there are so many contradictions in there. It's been written by so many different men. And how can you trust it? You have to believe that there was a divine power and authority behind the words that are in the Bible. It wasn't just some ordinary man that wrote it. No, no how, how, how do you even put it all together in your mind and, and comprehend it sometimes? Sometimes we don't understand the, all the things of God. Because we'll look at the Lord and say, how could he possibly? possibly forgive someone uh, like me or how could he possibly forgive uh, uh, someone out there that, that that's perhaps guilty of murder I'll tell you how he's able to do it because he's God and God all by himself that's how he's able to do it well that doesn't make sense well I don't know any other explanation but to say that he is love that he is forgiven that he is gracious that he is merciful he is still a good God how can anyone forgive after doing something so despicable? As he was on the cross with the little bit of strength and energy that he had, he still had time to pray. Sometimes we make all kinds of excuses or not to pray. I know I've been guilty. Maybe not praying as much as you, you know you know you should. Or maybe just skip prayer altogether and we come up with a thousand and one excuses why we can't take some time to spend with the Lord in prayer. Think about it. Jesus was on the cross and he still had time to pray. He was crucified. He was beaten. He was mocked. All these things. He still had the audacity to say, Father, forgive them. And then not only that, but he says, for they know not what they're doing. Father, forgive them anyway. That's the forgiveness of God. Let's look at the forgiveness of others or forgiving others. Again, Christ is our example. In the book of Matthew, chapter 18, verses 21 and 22, the Bible says, Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Peter said, Till seven times. Now, he probably didn't expect this response from Christ. Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times. He says, but until 70 times seven. What in the world? Don't you understand? He got on my last nerve today. Don't you understand? He didn't drink up all my milk. Blood man didn't even ask. He went and he took it. We can get mad about a lot of things. And we can get our feelings hurt real easily. And but he says forgive anyway. And some stuff is so petty anyway. You know, it's like you ever been upset with somebody and it was so stupid and insignificant that you forgot why you were upset? That goes to show you how stupid it was. Man, I'm never gonna forgive this person. Oh no, that person really did me wrong. That person really did me dirty. And he's trying to figure out what exactly did he do? Man, I don't even know. <laughs> Apparently, it wasn't that important. Apparently, it wasn't that significant. But God says, it doesn't matter how many times. He says, or oh, in other words, unlimited. Now, we can't take these verses out of context. Because you'll always have that other person to go to the other extreme. And do things to deliberately get on your last nerve. And then turn around and try to quote the scriptures. Knowing they're wrong. Well, let me go ahead and do something to this boy or this woman. I'm going to do this. this. I know it's, it's, it's wrong. I know they don't like it. I know that they're offended. But 
according to the Bible, you need to forgive. Seventy times seven. You can't intentionally keep doing stuff to people and then, and then try to quote the scriptures. That's still not right. We shouldn't be willingly wanting to hurt someone or get on someone's nerve. Even if it's their last nerve. Don't get on any nerves. It's not right. He says forgive until seven. He says 70 times seven. So in other words, we have to be willing to reciprocate that forgiveness. Matthew chapter 6, verses 14 and 15, he says, For if you forgive men their trespasses, he says, Your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. It's easy to hold on to something, but we need to keep those scriptures in the back of our mind. We need to hold them very dear to our hearts. If I'm not going to forgive somebody, I cannot expect my Heavenly Father to turn around and forgive me. I'm wrong. I cannot afford to play with my soul. I need to be careful. I need to be cautious because I don't want to go to the grave with unforgiveness in my heart. It's the wrong answer. Paul declared in the book of Colossians chapter 3, he says, put on therefore as the elect of God, he says, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. We want people to forgive us, but are we willing to forgive others? And you got to think about how God forgave us when, when we were unlovable, when we didn't love ourselves, when we were in yet our sins doing all kinds of, of wickedness. But God forgave us. He died for us. So we can forgive. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 31 and 32, he says, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking, he says, be put away from you with all malice, be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. It's almost verbatim what he was saying to the Ephesians. But the point is still the same. I'm not going to have quarrels and bitterness in my heart and then hold on to just all this unforgiveness. That's, that's not good. Some people will hold on to these things for offenses for years. And the longer we hold on to those things, the more we'll be destroyed. We'll dig just a hole that's so deep that we cannot get out of. And it's not because God can't help us out, but we just, we just don't think that we can get out. Kind of leads me to the next point, but I'm going to hold off on just a little bit and talk about this a little bit more. He, he says, let all bitterness. And really, when you think about it, what is bitterness? It's, it's when a person don't want to forgive. But see, this see. <laughs> I understand what you're saying, but this person did. Sometimes we could have legitimately been done wrong. It happens. It just kind of comes along with the territory and this thing called life. Live long enough, people are going to offend you. Live long enough, people are going to do things to intentionally to, to, to just get on your nerves, to hurt your feelings, or, or tear you down, or act like they've given you a compliment, but really it's an insult. They do all kinds of wickedness. Look what they did to my Jesus. They mocked him, did they not? If, that, if, you're, if you're the king of the Jews, then, then why don't you save us right now? If you're really God, come, or come down or show us. Uh, we want to see more signs. Uh, or we want to see more miracles. Uh, I know you don't. Uh, if you want to see more miracles, you should have never put them up there in the first place. They said, come on down. A little will believe. No, you won't. You didn't believe when he healed Bartimaeus. You didn't believe when the woman with the issue of blood got killed. Or you didn't believe when that impotent man was by the pole. Or you didn't believe when that, man, that little boy had a devil up in him. Oh, why would you believe now? Come on down. Do some miracles. Prophesy. Tell us who hit you in the face. Mocking him. But even in the midst of all of that, Jesus still had this forgiving spirit. Only God could do that. Because we know how it is when our flesh or that carnal man, the carnal woman gets the best of us. Ooh, I was driving today and I wasn't I mean, you, you can still be upset and be a Christian. You know what's possible? Christians don't, should not use curse words. Sometimes people like to use those 
Now these words, sometimes you see those words in the Bible, but depending on the context that you use it in, it can still be a curse word. Those four-letter words, some people like to use a D word. A Christian should not be using that type of language. Say the S word. That's, that's not a good word to use. He says, how can, how can bitter water and, and sweet water flow from the same fountain? Those things ought not to be. Christians shouldn't use that type of language. If you slip up and say, you need to ask God to forgive you, and he will. And you need to ask God to help you clean up that language. Say, God, take those words out of my heart. Take it out of my mind. So someone, something, something may come up one day. You don't have to curse. Now back to what I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted. So I was driving, minding my own business like I normally do. And I, and I normally when I'm driving, especially in the morning, I like to spend a little time in prayer. I want to get my mind together as I'm preparing for the day because you don't know what's going to happen. Especially you work on a job. You don't know who the devil is working on to get on your nerves by the time you get there. So you got to pray. You got to pray because you don't know. So I'm driving. I went through the gate. And uh, now I was already in the front. And somebody was driving in this little video old car. It looked like a Mini Cooper or something. Then stepped on the gas. Now mind you, they were, they were behind me. Then stepped on the gas and speeded up. I was like, oh no, I laid on the horn. <laughs> Hoping the MPs would say something and do something. They ain't do nothing. Probably was in the car asleep. But anyway, anyway, I'm off track, y'all. I know. Forgive me. We're talking about forgiveness, right? Forgive me. But the, the point was, hey, so something may have happened, and I'm not going to be walking around. I'm, not, I'm definitely not going to let that, uh, allow that to ruin my whole day. You crazy? No, 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 no. God woke me up this morning. I got something to be thankful for. <laughs> I got, I have a reason to praise God. I have a reason to say, thank you, Jesus. Uh, I have, so things, uh, sometimes things get real hectic throughout the day. Sometimes you get some bad news, uh, maybe coming from back home or what, what, whatever the case, uh, whatever the situation. But don't we still have so much more to be thankful for, especially if the good Lord delivered you, especially if he already forgave you of your sins. Uh, I'm not going to go throughout the whole day, throughout the whole week, throughout the whole year. I'm feeling like a dog and saying nobody loves me. Oh no, I know of one called Jesus who died on the cross for my sins. I know for a fact that the Lord loves me. I'm not going to feel sorry for myself. That gets me to the next point, talking about forgiving yourself. Now again, Christ, the how you forgave, this is the, this is the example for all of us. Okay, so we, we, we see how God forgave. That should be our example so that we can learn how to forgive others. And not only forgive others, but forgive ourselves. Forgive ourselves. Stinking thinking. Many times people have this stinking thinking. They just can't get past certain things. A troubled past, or whatever it is, just years and years going by, still blaming themselves for so much. But I have a verse of scripture for you. If you're not familiar with the scripture, write it down. Write it down or however you're going to remember it. Do something. Get it in your heart. Because the enemy is going to come back. He's going to tell you more lies. But the apostle Paul says in Romans chapter 8, verse 1, he says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in who? Christ Jesus. He says, we walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And this word condemnation, it means an adverse sentence or damnation. This is, this is how some people walk throughout. You cannot be a Christian walking around in condemnation. It's almost like you just gave yourself this, this death sentence. Woe is me. I'm always this. I'm always that. I'm always a failure. I can't do anything right. 
I've, I've heard these from the time when I was a child, and, and sometimes, unfortunately, when kids hear that stuff, man, it, it, it messes up their mind. They grow up thinking that they are still a nobody, that they are still sorry. Some people can't even handle just a little, a little setback or a little defeat or something, and it just, it, it just bothers them. It gets in your spirit. It's like something, something is taking over. You, you, you can't, Christians shouldn't do that. Christians shouldn't think like that. So everything don't work out accordingly. So someone may come by and do something deliberately. Hey, I'm still a child of God. I'm not going to walk around blaming myself for something that happened years and years and years ago. Christ, when Christ forgave us of our sins, it, it wasn't just for the sin we did we may have done today. It wasn't just for a sin that we may have done uh, yesterday. You're talking about all the sins that you've ever committed in your entire life. From the time you came into the world until the time that you confess Christ as your Lord and Savior, that is how the God works and how he forgives he doesn't just take away just a little bit. He takes away everything, any and everything that we are willing to give him. Yeah. You got to surrender. God, I surrender everything. I'm not going to, well, let me hold on to this because I kind of still need this sin right here, God. This is, this is my backup plan just in case all this Christian living stuff don't work for me. I have, a, I have something to fall back on. We should never want to fall back on sin. God delivers you, you get up, and you keep on going forward. You don't stuff it in the corner somewhere and say, I'll come back to it later. Kind of reminds me of that, that one guy from the book of, I believe it was in Joshua, Aiken. He um, caused people and his family to die. Of course, he died too. Okay, the commander had went out, went forth. They were not supposed to take any spoils from the war. And what did, what did old boy do? He done took this Babylonian garbage. And I think about this all the time. This is how my little mind works. Okay, how, first of all, does the thing even fit? Second of all, you're going to stand out like a sore thumb. You're the only one walking around here that, 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 with something that belongs to the Babylonians. And here we are, the Jews. Bro, where you going with that garment? It don't even fit you. It's shiny. It's ugly. It's not even holy. But you want to walk around with it all. Boy, you got some nerve. So you know he couldn't just walk around with it. He hid it. He hid it, and lo and behold, see what happens when people hold on to their sin, and they want to hide it and tuck it? It cost people in his unit to die. They were all of a sudden, there. now God had blessed them. The walls of Jericho and fell down. God was moving, moving all the way. So God is blessing. Amen. And lo and behold, they get to this next place. And Joshua's like, man, what is, why, why, are we, why are we losing? Why, why are people in my unit dying? What's going on? Ooh, there was sin in the camp. He wanted to do things his own way. And he ended up getting some people in his unit killed. And of course, him and his family. Sin ain't no joke. It really isn't. But the point, I don't know how I got off onto that. But anyway, let me go ahead and use another verse of scripture. We're almost out of time. First John chapter 4 verse 4 says, Ye are of God, little children. He says, and have overcome them. He says, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Why should a child of God walk around feeling condemned, talking about some woe is me, and pity parties don't help nobody? A pity party will absolutely destroy you. There's no time for a pity party. I'm not pulling out no cake. I'm not pulling out no root beer floats. There is no pity party. I'm a, I'm a child of God. He says, greater is he that's in you. Okay, who is he talking about? Jesus Christ. Greater is Christ in you than he that's in the world. I'm a child of God. I've been forgiven. I know who I am in God. God has blessed me. He's never failed me. He's never let me down. My goodness, I am forgiven. I'm forgiven. I'm not going to walk around with no victory, defeat every single day, just can't get over the past. Why not? And Christ says, I forgive you. Why can't you forgive yourself? You cannot walk around blaming yourself for things that happened so many years ago. And so what? You don't succeed one time. Dust yourself off and try again. Man, I can't do nothing right. You know what? I learned, I, I learned years ago I must have been praying, or God, I know God dealt with me. 
But sometimes when it comes, depending on what it is, I don't always get it right away. But that's one thing about me, I don't like to quit. I hate quitting. Quitting, quitting is not an option, especially in this Christian race. Oh no, you done lost your mind. God done brought me too far. Too far to turn around and to, and to try to go experiment with some things in the world. Especially as I'm getting older, man, what am I going to do? There's something to think about. We can't keep up with the people in the world today. These crazy songs, you don't even know what they be saying sometimes. It's like, what in the world? And, and, and some people just be loving it. And you don't even know what the person is saying. And more than likely, you don't understand because they're high on something. They're not in their right mind. I, I, I don't belong to the world. I belong to God. And I choose to be around the people of God. I choose to be around upbeat people. People who are motivated. We, we have the same desires. We're, we're motivated about serving the Lord. We're motivated about going to see our sweet Jesus one day. Or however he calls us home. However he does it. We're motivated about that. We have the same thoughts concerning that. That, that this place is not my home. Ultimately, my home is in heaven. No more tears. No more crying. No more pain. No more sadness. No more depression. It's, hey, I don't, regardless of what, what kind of pandemics that, you know, there may be another pandemic later on once this corona stuff blows over. We don't know. Either way it goes, I'm still going to serve God. I'm still going to serve God. I'm not going to walk around and feel, oh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? No, no, no. I tell you what I want. I'm going to do what I've been doing. I'm going to continue to serve the Lord. I'm going to serve the Lord. It's like a, I'm kind of getting off the topic. Well, not really. Or well, whatever. Uh, there's one comedian. He was talking about these wrestlers. He said they pretty much always do the same thing. They'll be up in the camera talking, whatever, talking smack, concerning their opponents. And he's like, they always have this raspy voice. He said, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I tell you what I'm going to do. When it comes to this coronavirus, what am I going to do? What are you going to do? I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to serve the Lord. <laughs> Give God some praise. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do, but you're, you're not afraid. Why should I be afraid? I already read to you from the scriptures, 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. Greater is he that's in you. There's no time to be fearful. There's no time to walk around and feel condemned and feeling all alone and feeling like no one cares and feeling like no one loves and feeling like no one will ever be my friend. Oh, I have a friend that's sticking closer to me than a brother. His name is Jesus. He's the one that saved me. He's the one that raised me. He's the one that forgave me. I am forgiven. God is a good God. I am forgiven. You got to speak that thing into existence. You call, you've already confessed your sins. You said, God, forgive me. That's it. It's just settled. Don't let the enemy throw up your path. You throw up his future. We know where he's heading into the lake of fire. What about it tonight with heads bowed and eyes closed and reverence to the Lord? Whatever you may be going through, whatever you may be facing, you don't have to go through it alone. God is here to help. He's here to meet the need in your life. If you need salvation, if you need to get filled with the Holy Spirit, God can bless you in a mighty way. He can absolutely give you the desires of your heart. Father, I thank you for your grace and your mercy. I thank you, God, for your forgiveness, O oh Lord. I thank you for all that you have done on the cross for every one of us, O oh God. I thank you for allowing us to be in your presence and to just to know you even more in the reality. We pray that you would continue to move by your spirit, touch hearts, save souls, fill with the Holy Ghost, O oh God. And we will continue to give you all the praise in Jesus' name. The altar is open. Let's all find a place to pray. Spend time with the Lord. Let God touch you.